um, every time we meet a person, either a client or all of us here today, either it is online or in vivo, we have uh, expectations, we anticipate something, uh, we have thoughts, we have desires. So um, this is a meeting between all of us. Um, and as I was saying, um, I, I, had, I had on mind to, to deliver an experiential workshop. So I guess you all have, or it's easy for you to get a notepad, something like that, or you can take a note on your mobile and pencil. Um, so I would like you, it's not necessary for you to, to disclose what you have written down, but right now um, you can take a minute and write down three words. We are in the beginning of this workshop. I'm going to present you story writing and functional analytic psychotherapy and how this can be an evocative tool in FAP. Um, so this is just the beginning of this journey we're going to have for today. So is it, is it okay with you all to just take a note briefly? Okay. So we write down three words right now. What, what are the three, whatever words, it doesn't mind to be, uh, for us to be very thoughtful about that. Just write down spontaneously, what are the three words that in a way depict what's going on in us right now? Right. So whenever you have a question or something, just unmute yourselves and let me know what is going on because I, it's hard for me to see you all in the presentation. So um, you, you have this uh, permission from my side. So every time we get on a meeting point, we have the desire to, to follow our path. This is what's happening with our clients. They reach out to us and they expect something from us. And most of the times we, we have also expectations. And during this journey, um, we don't only offer our help. We, we get, let's say, awakening moments from this journey with our clients. Um, we have several means during this kind of uh, transport. Uh, and when I say means, it's um, the, therape the therapeutic approaches we all apply. Um, I started as a cognitive behavioral therapist, and that was the initial key during that journey. Um, but while years passed by, I thought that something was missing from my practice. CBT is a very well-structured approach. It gave me uh, the first tools. But then I bumped into people in ACT and FAP community. <clears throat> and actually FAP, um, let's say, gained my heart. So I'm really grateful I have um, known these people from FAP community. And um, from that point, I, I, I would say that therapy became more genuine, more interactive and in a way more liberating. So um, I'm combining, of course, CBT and FAP ACT. And what is more, I, I also add story writing. Uh, when I refer to stories, um, it's not that I write a novel for my clients. Uh, sometimes I might write a poem for them or an even shorter version of a poem, which is called haiku. Um, sometimes um, I might write um, a fairy tale for a client or a brief story, which in literature it's called flash fiction. Um, I write down the story for the client before the session. And it's, it's strange because most of the times I don't force myself to write down. It's as if inspiration that just hits the door. I open the door and I just write down what 
um, is the idea for the client. Um, so I, I meet the client in the session, I, I read the story for him or her, or I give the story to him or to her and actually he or she reads it by herself or himself. And actually I give the story until one point. So I ask later on to give an end to the story. Uh, so he comes back to session. If he or she has written the story, he or she reads the story and I share the story, the, the second part, let's say. Um, I will tell you more about this process, um, but actually it's a way um, to evoke more emotions or more thoughts in the session uh, with that practice. Um, I told you how very, very brief, briefly, of course, um, how I, I write the story or sometimes I even keep time and I ask the client to write the story together. This is what I'm going to ask you to do today. Uh, so I, I just ask him or her to, to think of uh, keywords or prompts. So we take notes. I think of three words. He or she thinks of three words. And then I keep the time, we might write for five minutes or 10 minutes, and then we share the story. And of course, um, there is no right or wrong. Um, everything, is, um, everything has room to, uh, for more investigation. Um, and most of the times when we express ourselves in, in this metaphorical way, um, our truth, let's say, comes on the surface in a, uh, in a very astonishing and surprising way. So this is what has captured my attention because sometimes I use, while I was more practicing CBT, I used to write down the um, case conceptualization and sharing my thoughts and how I could see my client in this format, which is more a strict format with bullet points and not exactly terminology, but um, it, it was a, a very specific form of letting him or her know how, how she or she is in my eyes or talking about psychopathology in a more simple way. Um, when I, in a kind of substituted this case con with the stories, <clears throat> more things came up on the surface. Uh, I got closer to my client and most of them are very grateful because they make me the question, so are you thinking of me outside the session and you are actually writing something for me? And I said, yes, I'm thinking of you. So um, it, it's a way to make this kind of self-disclosure as well, because we all think of our clients, but it's, it's a question whether it's right or wrong or what's the function to share with them that they are on our minds in a way. <clears throat> so after writing down the story and reading the story, <clears throat> There are specific cards that accompany the story. An associate uh, who is a graphic designer, uh, she reads the story and then she thinks of, uh, of an image. And um, these are the, the packages that the images are inside. There are probably more than 50 cards. So if we were together in a workshop, you'd see a card like that, uh, the, the first um, uh, one side of the card and then the other side is, uh, is a kind of uh, a postcard. So um, I actually give this in, in workshops in order to, to pre for participants to present uh, themselves. So if I had this card which says, unwrap yourself, you are your gift today, I, I was about to present myself according to this card. So um, the card would evoke me uh, something and if I, I was to share with you my story, some of my story, that card would be, let's say, my, my guide. Um, so then I give them the card. So it's a kind of a gift for them or a surprise. And it's something that I do from my heart, let's say. So in that way, therapy, which is, um, let's say, in the air, becomes more concrete. And they, they have something to, um, to go back to whenever they have the need to remember um, something that is useful. So some of them just put the card um, in a frame next to their bed or uh, on their fridge with a magnet. 
Uh, so this is uh, something beautiful, let's say, but at the same time, for me, my purpose is to be something meaningful for them. Um, so to go back and, let's say, uh, remind themselves of something useful. So several stories have written, but the point is what's the function of these stories? Um, I am not sure whether you are familiar with um, FAP theory. Um, I, I didn't have in mind to present you more things about FAP. If, um, if you want to get to know more about that, you are more than willing to email me and let me know what you need. Um, the basic thing is that FAP has these uh, three basic principles, which are the awareness, courage, and love. Um, so um, stories are a glue, let's say, that awareness, courage, and love are, uh, helps these principles get better together. So when uh, we talk about our awareness, we try to observe uh, clients' behaviors as uh, they arise in the session. And from the very beginning, it's not very easy to say whether these behaviors are functional or dysfunctional, or in other words, whether the behaviors are positive or negative. Um, um, so it's a, a true skill for us as therapists to uh, to take a moment and gather all the data that arise in the session and then to, to make a conceptualization and to see whether um, all these behaviors um, are under a category which is functional or dysfunctional. Um, of course, we focus on the way the client describes what's happening in his or her life. And I, I usually I say to my clients that my goal is for you to be trained to become the psychology of yourself. So what I have taught from several um, um, trainings, it's my time to deliver you this uh, know-how. Um, so it's this sometimes can be frustrating to, to have the behavior in front of us and to to, to make ourselves sure whether it's uh, functional or dysfunctional, but um, it's it's a part of the process. It's a part of the journey to to take time and see uh, how all these uh, behaviors evolve. And at the same time, we do not only focus our attention on the client's behavior. We also observe our own behaviors, and there is a code for that in FAP when we. Um, talk about the client's behavior. This is symbolized as CRBs, clinically relevant behaviors. And when we become aware of our own behaviors, this is symbolized with, a, with the letter T, which comes for therapist. Um, so from the very beginning, um, we, we, uh, we, we have this um, parallel process of observing the client and observing ourselves at the same time. For instance, a client may come inside the office and say, oh, uh, I really love your office. I really like the colors on the walls. This might be just um, a compliment and nothing else. But this might be something that is connected to the way he or she gives feedback or what expects from the other person. So uh, we we'll always search these parallel processes, whether a behavior in the session can be parallel with the behavior outside the session. And of course, um, our goal is to, to shape the behaviors and uh, to, to see more functional behaviors as they arise in therapy. And we do that through reinforcement. Um, it also uh, takes courage to, 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 to offer an experiential um, session or to offer experiential therapy because in the beginning it, it might be a little draining, it might be risky. For instance, um, making a self-disclosure as therapist might be a little terrifying. Uh, but then it's it's very surprising for me because I'm, sometimes I may deliver an interpretation for a client and he or she might not remember at all. And most of the times the client remembers things that I had shared from my personal life. And every time I do that is uh, always in the service of the client. If I, if I think that it will be helpful, I do that. 
and this is how the relationship gets equal and um, um, yeah, I, I think equal is the most appropriate word. And, and the myth of the best therapist or the therapist do not have problems um, fades away. Um, so it takes courage for me even to read the story because um, sometimes I get emotional. Sometimes I might become teary while, while I read the story to my clients, something uh, evokes in me as well. Um, or when I co-write the story in the session, in the session, um, I'm, I'm also under this pressure to, to deliver something meaningful. And I'm, I'm so anticipating for what the client has written. And the, the thing is to, to practice gener generalization, as we say in FAB, uh, because the main point is not only to build a, a strong therapeutic relationship. The main idea is to, to transmit what's happening in the session, all this um, um, atmosphere of understanding and worth, so the client can take out all the skills he or she has practiced and apply the skills and the interactions with uh, his loved ones, let's say, or the, the people that he or she is connected uh, in his life. And another piece which is so important and sometimes it can be also terrifying when to, we talk about love and we try to describe the therapeutic relationship th through this love because sometimes, most of the times, love is mostly connected with um, love relationships or romantic relationships. Still, um, it's this genuine care for our clients uh, or when I, I tell them that I think of them outside the therapy and I might write down a story, it's actually the love for, for them, the love for my practice. And um, uh, it, there, there is no censorship around them. Um, it, of, of course, we don't um, surpass the boundaries, um, but it, it's okay to talk about love in therapy as well. So it does strengthen the therapeutic relationship. And what I mean is um, this story process um, plays a role in this kind of strengthening. Um, most of the times uh, um, I'm, I'm feeling grateful for the um, uh, changes that my clients make. So this is an act of uh, gratitude or this is an act of saying that thank you for trusting me or thank you for uh, playing their role or being energetic in the therapeutic relationship. Um, um, what I, I write down in the end about generalization, I, I talked about this before, which is also an act of courage and love at the same time, because of course it's risky. I mean, if, if a client want to share the story with um, a relative or with a friend or a partner, the partner might not react in the same way as I reacted. So this can be um, a surprising experience or this can be a sad experience. But the idea is um, um, the willingness of taking the risk and sharing or might um, a client might think of writing a story for a loved one. So this, this is the idea that the stories can become, um, let's say, a, a loving domino effect of a connection and expression. Before telling you uh, the sources that I'm inspired, um, I think it's about time to take the second note for today. So before I ask you to write down three words, we were in the beginning of the session of, of the workshop. Right now, um, I would like something different from you. Since we don't have this occasion to, uh, to give you the cards and to let's, let, let's play with these postcards, um, I, I guess it's easy for you to find your mobile phone. So what I would like you to do is to open your phone, your mobile, and just see the most recent photo you have taken, either the latest one, or let's say the photo you had taken three days ago or one week ago, but anyway, the most recent photo. So you take your mobile, 
you see the photo and just take a minute and observe what's in the photo. <clears throat> and if you had to, to write down three words that um, are connected with this photo you have taken, what would be these three words or even three phrases? So take your time and keep this note of having a look at the photo on the mobile phone and writing down three words. So I guess we're ready to keep on. As I said, um, finding the triggers to be inspired to write a story, it's, uh, for, it's, it's easy or it can be difficult, but uh, my, my experience says that if um, uh, I'm willing to, to be more uh, aware to observe of this uh, kind of keywords or prompts or elements that let's say the whole process um, becomes um, easy or more relaxing. For instance, um, people share our, their stories from the past, from the present. So the life experience are so full of triggers, full of um, events and in these events um, uh, there are symbols, there are words, um, there are so many things let's say simply in general. Um, I had a client who grew up uh, with four siblings so as you can imagine the house was crowded, it was full of people and she was telling me that she had the tendency to escape in a small room because there she could find her peace of mind and avoid all the tension or the noise. So I wrote down a story for her where the box had several uh, functions. The box uh, was the room per se, in the practical matter of view. Uh, it was her refugee, the place where she could uh, give comfort to herself. But at the same time, the room was uh, her prison because she didn't take the risk to ask for quiet, let's say. Uh, or the, the same room uh, was herself. So um, in the story I wrote down for him, the room was a box and everything was uh, taking action around this box. So my associate thought of giving this image as an accompanying postcard for this client. Um, another client asked therapy, um, I listened a little bit the previous webinar about uh, clients with cancer and actually this client has therapy because uh, she suffered from cancer. Actually, while she was narrating her story, um, her relationship with her mother uh, was very intense and in there I could see several notes, let's say. So while these notes were taken care of, she could actually roll more smoothly and to investigate more her disease, the relationship with her husband, her son, and so on. So while she was narrating several things from her past, it struck me that she had told me that while she was a child, she, she just cut a flower, a rose from the neighbor's yard, and she offered the flower to her mother. And as a result, her mother slapped her, and that was um, a, a sad moment for her. It, it was not actually 
it's it's very tricky to say every time whether uh, this is abuse or not. Of course, it was a slap. A slap is a slap, and it's not that her mother was beating her up all the time. But that specific moment, let's say, broke her heart. So uh, several things had happened in her life, but that specific moment from her life story struck me. And uh, I have translated the story, so I will I will read this uh, story I had written for my client. While I was walking back home, I passed by the neighbor's yard. Uh, red, red roses were climbing through the fence. I remember your never-ending quarrel with dad. You have never brought me flowers, you told him, disappointed. The tension that followed struck me for good, not even a rose. Here I was standing in front of your desires. I let my heart cutting one rose. I kept walking vividly, looking forward to offering you the joy you had been dreaming of. I opened the door. Mom, this is for you. You led your hand, but you didn't take the rose. A slap put an unfair end in my expectations. How did you dare to steal the rose? You look at me angrily, turning your back at me. I was left alone with the rose in my hand. This memory keeps being a thorn inside me. Your reaction still nails me. It's not because you hurt me, nor is it uh, because of your being unfair. I carry the pain because I myself turned into a thorn, because I worry till today whether I will pierce someone with my love. Um, actually, she was really moved by this story. And it was surprising for me because I actually wrote down this story um, after the third session we had. I had this anticipation to, to share with her that at this specific moment um, was something and was, let's say, a, a key point, a hallmark in her whole life. And while sessions uh, passed by, uh, she kept the story and actually she wrote a letter by her own initiative to her dead mother. And that was very liberating and um, awakening moment for her. And that was even surprising for me because I didn't give her the direction to, to keep on the story by writing a letter to her dead mother. It was something that um, she did by herself and that was even more um, respectful to do. And uh, I, of course, reinforced her for uh, trusting her wise mind as a DBT therapist call uh, and the card was uh, that one uh, the, the postcard that, that was delivered and um, it accompanied her story another client entered therapy and um, she, she was working in an unstable way because uh, her heel in her shoe was broken and it just broke while she entered um, my office um, and this gave me the inspiration to write down a story and the function there to tell her that um, accidental things might happen, but I am always having trust in you that you can keep on whether uh, you wear one foot and the other foot is uh, naked. So it was um, an occasion for me to let her know that we can keep on together and I, I trust you in this process. Uh, or another client, uh, we had online sessions and I, I saw in the background a surfboard on her wall. She, she was having surf and I, I asked her to write down something in the session and one of the keywords were, was uh, the surfboard. Um, and again, that, that was uh, the function was to, to reinforce her to keep on therapy and to keep on investigating and processing whatever she had in need during therapy. Um, with this client, her own psychopathology was um, the inspiration. And this, it, it, this can become a paradox because sometimes psychopathology can be scary. But uh, with that client, um, her psychopathology was kind of playful because she had uh, trichotillomania, uh, the thing that uh, the client was pulling her hair. And it was very um, surprising for me to, to know that her dad was a hairdresser. So I wrote down um, a fairy tale where the, the comb is the protagonist. Actually, the, the comb is herself and the scissors uh, is uh, her father. And I, I wrote down a kind of a playful but 
I try to, 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 to write an insightful, let's say, play, fairy tale of how she can cope with these um, threatening scissors and how she can stand for herself as, as a comb. Um, and that was the card that accompanied her story, the, the red comb and the scissors. Um, another client is, um, um, the, her profession is making jewelry. So the protagonist of the story, again, a fairy tale is a ring. Um, and the basic um, story there is that uh, the ring is searching for the right mate, the right finger, and she cannot find the finger and what's happening then with the ring uh, because she was struggling a lot with her loving relationships. Or for, for a client who was um, um, in, 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 his, in her process of making the coming out, especially to, to her father, uh, I wrote a story about um, um, a person who's on stage and, uh, um, and tries to show uh, uh, herself off on the screen. Um, so I played with that um, um, connotation of, of a film that comes out on screen and herself coming out as a, as a gay person. Um, self as context is a very meaningful process and there are so many things that have been write, written, especially in ACT about that and so many experiential exercises. Uh, so I, I tried to implement self as context with, um, with a client um, uh, who, who played the, the bass, but um, uh, he had the tendency and while he was um, narrating what was happening in session, he was telling me that um, I'm always keeping a microphone and talking all the time. And sometimes what's the point in talking all the time and all the time. So his own words gave me uh, the inspiration to write down about uh, the microphone and what's happening to the person who holds it and whether it is uh, useful or not to have the microphone on the hand or letting the microphone down. Um, so th that, that was the, the story about and the postcard, of course, that followed later. And of course, values is another um, so important issue, but sometimes it's hard to deliver or um, to help people make meaning of it. What are values? Sometimes we, we go back to traditional values or um, values began, become a vague process. So with a client, um, I, I wrote down something, let's say, like a poem, uh, trying to show her what's meaningful for her and trying to make her be more connected with um, her own stuff that matters. And of course, losses is another uh, subject in our lives, which is very painful. And therapy per se, has its loss since uh, the client and we know that there is an ending point in this journey. We're not going to be together for five or ten years, no matter how we may like a client. Uh, there is a point when therapy will end. So this um, brings a kind of loss as well. So um, sometimes I used to write uh, a story while therapy ends. And this is what I did with that, um, with that client. Um, so I gave him the story as, um, um, as, as a way for a closure for his therapy. Or stories can help a person um, process his or her grieving, um, whether um, he or she has experienced um, a loss experience death or divorce or uh, whatever can be the loss. Um, so since we talk about ending points and losses, this is um, a small, let's say, poem I wrote while I was having my FAP training, and that was an online one. Um, I wanted to say thank you to the trainers and the participants. Uh, it was an act of uh, showing them how grateful I was that I had this experience. Um, so this is what I shared with him and right now I'm sharing with you. 
um, telefaces is the title. So nine faces on my screen every Thursday to be seen. Stories, words, feedback come to my ears. So powerful that almost bring me tears. Connecting every week draws a smile on my face. You all involved are dressed up with grace. In our 90 minute session, I often say, oh, in the hours afterwards, I mostly feel, oh. Interacting with you is like a mental feast. Our hearts united make the shape of a feast. Ali, Amy, Beth, Catherine, Elizabeth, Gareth, Joanna, Michael, Patty. If we were fingers, we would be two hands being put together close to our hearts. Telem is a Greek prefix meaning distant. Thank you, Faces, for each closed instant. I just wanted to give you a flavor of how these uh, stories look like, and these are a few that are uh, translated into English. Um, before um, getting all to a little more slides, I, I think it's about time if we had a small, let's say, break to see who's who's here on my screen okay so what if we could take a minute and um you had kept some notes right um so it's about time to to let yourself and trying to, to build a story or to create a poem or whatever comes to your mind or to your heart right now. What do you think of that? In the beginning, I asked you to write down three words, what was happening in the beginning. Uh, there are almost 40 minutes past. Um, you saw the photo on your mobile, more words were there. So I think, um, it would be nice and playful to keep time and to say that what we can all create in 10 minutes. So you can either write a story for yourself or perhaps you, you don't want to use anything uh, from what I prompted you before. Perhaps you have on mind a client of yours after listening to what I'm trying to do with my clients and you can write a short story for a client of yours. So you have this option, either writing down something for yourselves or for one of your clients, just to practice a little bit what you have been listening to all these minutes. So are you willing to, to take that risk with me? Because I'm gonna write at, at the same time with you all and share. So, and nodding would be a good um, sign to, <laughs> excellent, okay. So I'm keeping the time. So I think that 10 minutes would be okay for this. So time has started. And you can use uh, the previous prompts you, you wrote down before or new ones or whatever, just let yourself and let's say play a little bit with that.
So since uh, I was talking before about functional analytic psychotherapy and the idea uh, regarding this therapeutic approach is to set ourselves uh, outside our comfort zone. And this is what I ask our clients to do. And this is what we are supposed to do as uh, therapists or trainees or trainers or human beings. But the idea is to take risks um, that are connected to our values. So who would be willing to take a risk now and to, to read something or everything? I, I can make the start, but I'm talking all the time and I'm feeling my lips are dry. Yeah, Ioana. So you have to unmute yourself. And I'm, I'm so eager to give an applause to Ioana for making the start. So let's all clap to Ioana. <laughs> Not so soon. <laughs> um, I want to start with a question. Is there a, a difference between um, a metaphorical stories, therapeutical in the classical style, and this kind of story? These stories are, of course, metaphorical and have this uh, therapeutic flavor, I would say. So, yeah, it's, uh, these stories are under this category of uh, having several functions and serving uh, the client. Um, oh, beginning with the uh, three words yeah. I wrote in the first uh, task you, you give us. Um, human love and kindness. Okay. And uh, the photo I focused uh, was my daughter um, photo. And mm -hmm. I wrote, um, I'm extremely proud of her. It's very beautiful and intelligent. And um, she gives me so, um, so much love every day. Mm -hmm. And in this frame, I think about my... Um, my female client, mm -hmm. I'm a CBT therapist and I'm uh, just uh, now familiarized with ACT. Mm -hmm. I'm in the beginning with ACT. I know nothing about ACT. Okay. Uh, or very, very small things. Mm -hmm. And um, this client is a very challenging one for me because um, uh, she has a pathology uh, borderline and um, she is very, um, she see herself very uh, misunderstood, uh, misunderstood about every person uh, she related with. Hmm. She had a critical, uh, a very critical father. Um, she grew up with a mother um, overprotective and uh, 
protective and loving. Mm -hmm. And um, she wrote to me a uh, mail uh, next, um, uh, several, several days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, she told me uh, only three, uh, three person um, has understand her. And I'm not uh, uh, in this three. Okay. Um, but it's not a male who, uh, who uh, for punishing me, mm -hmm. just only just only to uh, make uh, me to understand better. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, in after a few days today, I I don't uh, reply from email because I want to to. Uh, um, Print it and discuss it tomorrow on uh, the session. And mm -hmm. today uh, he uh, wrote me and uh, she asked me if I get the mail because uh, she wanted me a uh, feedback mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, soon, sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote a, a story. I don't uh, um, need to because of the time. Uh, mm -hmm. all of my story okay. she likes puppies and uh, I uh, I wrote a story about a puppy who grow uh, who open uh, has her, his eyes in um, um, I don't know how to say in English starch um, uh, the the bird who bring the children in me in the Oh, I, I don't know how to say in English. But Joanna, this is so sweet you did for your client and so thoughtful. So I, I don't care how the words are in English. I care about um, what you did. A okay. puppy who, okay. who, who finds himself in the nest of, the, of this bird. Okay. And uh, he's very... Um, um, misunderstand in every way because uh, they fly they have uh, mm -hmm. i don't know how to say yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, he bring uh, they bring uh, the wrong food and the puppy cries and uh, uh, the bird don't understand and one day the puppy look uh, look um, on the ground and uh, see um um, another um, dog and um, he wants so bad to, to go to the dog and um, um, he forgets that, that they uh, don't have uh, wings and mm -hmm. uh, uh, jump from the nest okay. and the mother bird uh, see um, grabs him and uh, uh, put him gently on the ground mm. and with this uh, gesture the puppy knows that the mother bird understand he needs and um, go along with them and um, um, it's a, this is a happy end because uh, the puppy uh, um, goes with the other dogs and uh, uh, realize that um, even that mm, the birds don't understand them in all of the aspects of the day, mm. uh, he, uh, she understand the, the most important need to, uh, to be with this um, family dogs mm. and help uh, him to go there. I don't know if you if you understand me because my English is. Uh... <laughs> I'm I'm so uh, thrilled and so moved by what you uh, you thought of doing, and I'm so so eager to to see what your client's reaction would be because I, I can I can sense that you did it from a, a very warm point. Uh, you started describing your relationship with your daughter and then you said that with your relationship with his client. So 
uh, that transition was so, so warm and touching for me. And your, uh, your desire to help her and to show her and to offer her feedback. And this is not feedback, actually. When you, you think of a story in this workshop, it's something so valuable that you offer her. It's as if you're offering her a gift. And um, this is the reason that I'm saying that I'm, I'm, I'm so eager to see what's happening next. And, um, and of course, we can exchange emails. And if... Um, if you want to give me feedback <laughs> after Gladly. giving give feedback to the client, I would be more than happy to, to, to read it. But this is so beautiful that you thought and that you wrote down. And of course, I can understand that English is not our mother tongue. English is not my mother tongue either. But wh what happened here? What um, was evocative for you? It's so, so tender and beautiful. And last but not least, Joanna, I would say that this client is so lucky that helps you as a therapist uh, because you, you show genuine care for her. So this is what I wanted to share, <laughs> last but not least. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you deserve the clapping, as I said before, <laughs> clapping in the end. <laughs> for my English. <laughs> So is, is anybody else who wants to, to share something or read, who wants to read what has written? Mm, or we I, I, I could share. Okay, Barkas. That's okay. Okay. Go ahead. So, so I wrote a poem for myself uh, basing on the six words that, uh, so the six words were first like, I felt anxious, caffeinated, and hungry. And then when I look at the photo, it was friends, happiness, cooperation. And uh, the poem is uh, a stream of behavior flowing. Don't forget to enjoy it. The stream will flow till it ends. This might happen even today. I appreciate this gift of life as it is flowing right through my hands. Even though it, it does not matter whether I am aware or nada, the movie is on, the experience is fresh. Before I go, I'll have a taste. Oh, nice, Bartos. I, I, was, I was really happy to see you while you read the poem because I could see the smile of uh, pride inside. Was, was that right? I, yeah, I it's had, fun. So you were uh, proud of what you have written and it's yeah. so beautiful. I, I'm happy I gave it a, like a, a try, yeah. <laughs> Great, great. And it's beautiful, the stream that you have created all these days with all of us. And um, you should celebrate this kind of uh, streaming processes. Okay, anybody else? Uh, so I have a very short poem, uh, if I can share. Of course. Um, and the words are uh, the first three, uh, curiosity, worry, and headache. And the second after uh, seeing the picture is it was uh, confident, surprised, satisfied. And I translated, uh, first I wrote it in Polish, but then I translated my poem. Okay. How, how did you manage everything? Right, <laughs> translating. <laughs> it's very short. Okay. Surprise took away sadness. Curiosity took away the tears. What is temporary? What is eternal? Who am I on a highway? I live because others let me live. Oh, that was so beautiful. Applauding. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing and doing uh, both writing down in Polish and thinking of us and writing down in English as well. That, that was so thoughtful of you that wanted to bring us, bring us all into your world. So I like this initiative. Claudia. 
So poem for you, poem for Bartos, and Iona, you wrote a kind of a fairy tale. So how artistic are we <laughs> on this Sunday day? <laughs> Anybody else? I, I can see that there are three more people and something on chat. I don't know if it is relevant. Okay, no. As I said before, it's not necessary for everybody to talk. Um, I would be glad to, to send you the, the presentation and you can reach out to me later if you need anything else, any question or comment or... I'm, I'm so, so eager to, to listen to everybody, but I, want to, I don't want to put pressure. Um, so I, I can keep on with uh, the presentation. Is that all right for you? Keep on, okay. <laughs> so we were here. Um, of course, we don't only get inspired from our clients and what's happening in the session. The idea is uh, that if we want to cultivate the skill of writing, <clears throat> there are so many stimuli, so many triggers outside. So the idea is to, to get connected to these uh, triggers. Um, offering uh, care to ourselves, it's another way to, to collect inspiration. And the idea here is how creative we are regarding self-care, because even self-care can be an inspiring process. For instance, someone might uh, go running in a way to, to take care of him or herself. Another person might start painting or cooking or whatever. So all these kind of activities require creativity. Even when we choose a way to relax, even this can be playful or creative because there is not only one way to relax. Um, or even we can practice mindfulness or be a little playful while we cook or while we clean the house. And sometimes it's, uh, for me, it's so bizarre, but I have talked about it with other people who, um, who get inspired while we're doing the chores in the house. I mean, uh, lately I was, um, I was cleaning the bathtub with that move, you know, in, in, in the toilet, which is, which is not a creative scenery at all. It is just um, messy hair, sweating and doing uh, the bathroom. And there, I, perhaps the, the mind it gets um, in, in a state where we don't think of anything, let's say uh, consciously. Uh, and there ideas start popping up and it, it, it is a very pleasant surprise. Of course, when we wander around, when we travel, uh, there are even more stimuli and it is very disappointing for me and I guess for you all that this kind of activity is um, on hold because of uh, the pandemic. Um, and of course, flexibility gives us uh, the, the expansion to, to try new things, to experiment ourselves with um, new ideas. Um, I just put that photo because uh, when I was in Sweden for a conference and ordered a coffee from Starbucks, my name is uh, Stavrula and it's a, it's a peculiar name for people who are not Greek because it's a typical Greek name. So a small thing, but something to play around. I call myself Stasa there. So my Greek friends are making fun of me because Stasa is a little silly, but foreign people uh, see it as a normal thing. So it's, it's good to play around and to, to have fun. Uh, and of course, while we read um, several books or papers or whatever is inviting, um, of course, stimulates our inspiration and creativity. And um, um, I would say as an epilogue that, of course, it's very important to know how, what we do as uh, therapists. Uh, it's very important to know the rules. Um, but afterwards, 
only sticking to rules can be um, inflexible or draining. So um, implementing creativity, uh, inspiration or playfulness and daring to apply that or add this on the already existing knowledge, I think this um, Keterna, this can give a kind of metamorphosis uh, to our professional role or to our personal lives. So I would really prompt you to, to go out there and try story writing or storytelling with your clients, with your loved ones. And as you did today, because we walked a little bit the road of uh, story writing, um, and I'm very, very eager to um, have a kind of continuity with you through emails, of course, but um, I would love to see you in person if um, the time is appropriate or in a conference uh, at the ACBS or wherever. So thank you so much today for being uh, co-travelers with me. Um, I guess we have a few minutes for questions or comments. Or if anyone else wants to, to read what has written. I can see, Carl, that you turned your video on. I don't know if there is a hidden message in that or you just... <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> okay, just like that. Okay. Nice background, by the way. I like your bouquets. <laughs> so I can send uh, my presentation to Bartos. Um, yes, I will collect all PDFs and uh, share it uh, on the uh, on the videos that will be put on YouTube. So okay. also if you want to return to anything from Savura's uh, workshop, uh, of course you can. Okay. All right, so it seems that there are no questions and uh, thank you very much Stavrula for letting us end uh, the conference uh, on such a refreshing vital note. So uh, thank you, thank you very much for that. And of course for accepting uh, the invitation and, uh, thank you well. and thank you very much to all the participants uh, who uh, dared to uh, share their own uh, creativity it is always very personal and so this concludes the conference um, thank you very much and I hope this is not the last uh, um, time we see each other in such format um yeah and thank you very much claudia for helping me with organizing the conference it was very i i appreciate this very much thank you bartos thank you everybody and uh, i will upload what i have written uh on the fab uh, on the on the facebook uh, page or i i can read it again but i i have uh, shared so many things so and now I, I become a little shy to do that. <laughs> oh no, I can end with that, my story, what I wrote down in these 10 minutes. So here we go and then we can say goodbye. So with a beating heart and a pair of lips full of anticipation, I wanted to share my story. The who am I in my head was still echoing. Of course it was. A small dose of self-doubt had always been welcome, but it was not bitter in my mouth anymore just being there at the edge of my tongue, saying hello to new tasties. With a pair of eyes eager to savor meaningful meetings, I sat on my desk. My screen, a table surrounded by hungry guests. Would I make their stomachs full? I shallowed one more, who am I? I wanted to offer them a plate with love. Thank you all for accepting this plate of love. I, I, I wish I offered you. <laughs> something practical today. Um, so that was it. I read it. I'm not going to upload it on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you again.
enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And who knows, perhaps uh, we see each other one day in person. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. And this concludes our conference. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.